Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ. My name is Craig Johnson. I'm a son of this of this uh, church, having grown up here and went to seminary and was ordained in this church actually 25 years ago next month. I can't believe it's been 25 years already. And served a few years in the civilian church and then went back into the military where I'd started to be a chaplain. And now uh, I'm about to wrap up a, a, a great career uh, in the Army as a chaplain. Thank you for the prelude this morning. Emmanuel has a long tradition of beautiful church music, and so I'm, I'm so glad that you're, you're here and blessing us with your music uh, as well. So as you might have heard last week, our Pastor Dion is out this week and has turned the pulpit over to me, so I'm glad to, to bring you a message here this morning. If you turn to the back of your uh, bulletin, you'll find a number of announcements, uh, active things going on in the, in the chapel, to, in the church to know about. Uh, of note, the church office will be closed on Monday, tomorrow, in honor of Memorial Day. And you'll see the other announcements there that might pertain to you. I'd remind you to sign in on the books uh, in your pews so that we have a record of everyone here this morning. Again, great to be back with you this morning at a minute. Please join me in the call for worship. Oh, too soon. Now, if you would join me in the call to worship. Today, followers of the way 
gather in many places. Oh. Pardon me. Oh, I've got the same thing. Oh. I've got, I read your response. I'm sorry. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. From Jerusalem to Galilee, from Pago Pago to Apia. God's Spirit still blows like a mighty wind. God's Spirit still burns like tongues of flame. God's Spirit still flows like currents in living water. Praise God. Praise God. Let us worship God from whom all blessings flow. join together with our invocation. O Holy Spirit, come and blow through this gathering space as mighty wind as you did with the apostles at the beginning of the church. Pour your spirit upon us all, both colonized and colonizer of all ages, all genders, to speak your words, see your vision, dream your dreams, toward your great and glorious day, when everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
flow like rivers of living water from the hearts of believers through the songs of praise, words of worship, and prayers of devotion. Amen. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them. A tongue rusted on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven being in, living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? Now, and, now, and how is it that we hear each in our own native language? Corinthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Pelagra, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and raised his voice, uh, raised and said, ah, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is not what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men will share dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and, I, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portions of the heaven above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 37, one through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me around them. They were many living in the there were many living in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, "Mortal, can these bones live?" I answered, "O Lord God, you know." And he said to me, "Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live." I lay my sinews on you, and you shall have flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy and say, breath, prophesy, mortal. Say to the breath, say to, to the breath, say to the breath, this says the Lord, come from all four winds of breath, breathe upon these slain that they may live. 
I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, my people, O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you upon your own soil, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Thank you. you. You courageously took on that reading of, from the second chapter of Acts that no one wants to read because it has all those names of the many nations that no one knows how to pronounce. You did that well. Thank you. Let's pray together our prayer for transformation and new life. Dear God, God of oceans and land and all life contained therein, you created this world by the power of your word. By your own hands and breath, you formed humankind in every conceivable shade. You gave us islands and continents as a gift and charged us to be the stewards of what you have made. Creator God, we have failed you and abused your gift to us. We have offended you and defiled your creation, including seeing fellow human beings as less than created in your very image. Forgive us for betraying your trust. Forgive us for our greed and arrogance. Hear the cries of islands drowning in the rising seas oceans that rise with the melting of the ice. Hear the cries of our world in distress through storm and drought. God of life, heal your wounded earth. Embolden us to choose the path that leads to life so that we may renew your shalom in land, sea, and sky. This we ask in the name of the one who came, that we may have life in abundance your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. God's love does not belong to one person or group of people. God's love and forgiveness is available to all, even those who do not ask for it. You can also be agents of God's love and healing, so let us strive to receive and give this gift of God's restoration with creation and with each other. Be God's love and healing for people and planet. Amen. Well, it's always a privilege to be back here at Emmanuel, the church of my childhood. At one time, I carried the candle lighter up here as an acolyte as a little boy. I sat in confirmation class with Reverend Austin Dorf. A few of you may remember him, and Reverend Bach. And, uh, Jane Fissler Hoffman was my youth pastor for many years, and, and then Reverend Higgins uh, was uh, such a guide for me as I sought my own ordination and helped ordain me and guide me into Christian ministry myself. 
I've often had pause to reflect on the profound influence that this church has had in my life of ministry. It's so nice now that I can tune in to the internet from wherever I am in the country or in the world and watch the service. And to all of you who are tuning in online, we welcome you in our joint worship this morning. In a few weeks, my wife and I will be reporting to Germany for our new assignment, what will be my last assignment in my career. Uh, and so you can be sure that I'll be tuning in to be a virtual part of worship here from time to time as well. It was late at night as I settled into my sleeping bag, lying on my cot. It was a few months after my unit had deployed to Kuwait, and not long before we would move into Iraq at the very start of the war in 2003. A young soldier stuck his head through the tent flap. Clearing his voice, he hesitantly said, Chaplain, would you have a minute to talk to me? I told him I would and, and welcomed him into the tent. After shaking the fog of near sleep out of my head, I invited him to sit down and I could tell how nervous he was as he took his seat next to me on my cot. He wasn't afraid, he wanted me to know. He knew that danger likely lay ahead as we went into Iraq and the war began and he was prepared to face that. But there was something more than just the threat of facing an armed enemy that was causing him to lose sleep that night. It wasn't dying that he most feared. No, he said it was being asked to kill another human being. How could he do such a terrible thing? Even if he would have to do it in order to protect his own life or to protect the lives of others, wouldn't he be condemning himself as a taker of life? going against everything that a person of faith had been raised to think. Tears welled in his eyes as he related these thoughts to me, and it was late into the night that we talked, working our way together through some of these most crucial questions. I've been a soldier now since I first joined the Army in 1988. No one's mouth drops open when I say that here. But when I tell many of my young soldiers that fact, they can't believe it. That was 10 or 20 years before most of them were born. But in some ways, I'm the most unlikely soldier of all. As a child, I grew up in the mid-1960s, and I remember well the images on the black and white television in our living room. Walter Cronkite bringing us desperate news of the war in Vietnam. A group of guerrillas ambushed American soldiers in the Nha Trang Valley, killing four and wounding eight. On another day, in the highlands, guerrillas ambushed a convoy of American troops and killed several and put the unit to flight. All of these stories about ambushes and fights with guerrillas. Now, I was a smart kid. I knew what that meant. It meant that big, hairy apes had learned to use machine guns and we were all doomed. I asked my mother, why would anyone go to a place like Vietnam? She told me, well, when we have a desperate situation like a war in our country, we have a draft, and so young men have to go in order to make our country more secure. As a five-year-old, I knew that my number would be coming up any day, and I did not want to go to Vietnam. She told me later she would hear me sobbing in my bed and she would come in and ask me what's wrong and I would say, I don't want to go to Vietnam, Mama. Just to calm me down and let me sleep, she would say, if the war is still going on when you're old enough and you get drafted, you and I will go to Canada. That's what the draft dodgers did back in those days. None of this sat well with my Korean War veteran father, I have to say who didn't like the idea that his son was going to grow up to be one of those hippies. But in fact, my own call came not only to my country in uniform, but also to a call to ministry and to minister to those who wear the uniform. It's been a wonderful career, and I'm proud now that my nephew is also uh, begun in the Sea Cadets and is looking toward a life of service for himself. Tomorrow, we will commemorate Memorial Day, 
an annual observance in which we remember those who have given their lives while serving in the military. This commemoration began just after the Civil War ended. It was initially known as Decoration Day, a time for the nation to decorate the graves of war dead with flowers. One of the earliest such commemorations occurred in Charleston, South Carolina. Even before the end of the Civil War, former slaves held a parade of 10,000 people to honor 250 Union soldiers who had died in action. Those soldiers had been buried in a mass grave in Charleston, having died at the Confederate prison camp lo located there. After the city fell to the north, the newly freed slaves unearthed and properly reburied the soldiers who had died. And then they held a parade and placed flowers at the soldiers' graves. These kinds of commemorations went on for decades after the war. Following the First World War, Decoration Day was expanded to honor the memories of those who died in all American wars. And in 1971, Memorial Day was declared a national holiday to be observed annually on the last Monday in May. Memorial Day is an important moment in our civic life when we reflect on those who gave what President Lincoln called the last full measure of their devotion for their country. Many churches find ways to mark Memorial Day. While observances range widely, it's not uncommon for preachers to mention it in a prayer, a litany, or a sermon. Some, however, will regretfully ignore it altogether, and this year perhaps all the more, since this year the Memorial Day weekend coincides with the day of Pentecost, one of the most significant holidays of the church year. Pentecost when God made sense of the senseless babble of languages. It happened to me personally in a crowded airport in Kuwait City. I'd been in Kuwait with my unit for some weeks preparing for the war in Iraq. I was sent by the commander to the airport with another officer to pick up an arriving senior leader. Of course, I don't speak Arabic and I don't understand it, for about an hour, I stood at that busy airport looking around, my ears in a sea of gibberish, random sounds that made no sense to me at all. Then, in an instant of clarity, I heard English being spoken from the other end of the terminal. So far away from me and with so many other voices in between, but a voice speaking a language I understood was like a beam of light piercing through all the other noises straight to my ear, American English, no less, my native language. It was a homing beacon, sharpening my senses to its signal. I felt every molecule in my body relax as I focused on a voice that I could understand in the midst of the crowd. It was amazing. It was like coming home from a strange place. In today's Pentecost story, we see this dynamic played out tenfold. The disciples are empowered to speak some 15 different languages, not their own, and not just any foreign language. The Spirit empowered them specifically to speak the languages of devout Jews from every nation in Israel, the scripture says. Just imagine Parthians, Mesopotamians, and Cappadocians as immigrants or visitors in Jerusalem, hearing their mother tongues spoken clearly for maybe the first time in years. And this, give, and this gift given for the sake of others sounded so crazy and ridiculous that as the scripture says, others sneer. Peter responds to these sneerers by calling on an ancient prophetic tradition. He doesn't hesitate to claim this Pentecost experience as the fulfillment of Joel's Old Testament vision, inspiring us to what it looks like for God's spirit to be poured out on all flesh. That's a significant verse there, especially for some in the church today. In these verses, all flesh means everybody, young and old, women and men, those in the church and those outside the church, those who we've decided are condemned and those who see themselves as holy. No differentiation is made here in the scripture. The disciples received this gift of clarity in the midst of so many languages. 
the ability to communicate where it would have been incomprehensible to them. But just what did this gift mean? While the gift is amazing itself indeed, this act alone is not the end of the story. Those disciples could have received those remarkable gifts of languages and simply done nothing. They could have just resumed their lives, gone back to work, gone back to their recreation and play, and added this story to the list of remarkable things that happened to them as followers of Jesus. But of course, that isn't what they did. What they did do was take this remarkable gift as a call for the duty they now had to perform. What they did was make this amazing day the start of a whole new life of service to humankind. This year, while we mark the birth of the church by the life-giving power of the Spirit, we also remember this weekend as Memorial Day and Memorial Day Sunday, a day to recall the significant costs of war, the human lives that war claims. Unfortunately, very often church celebrations, especially in denominations such as ours, will focus on the more negative, painful, and terrible aspects of service to the nation. Things like the suicide epidemic, PTSD, and the struggles that many veterans go through. But there is, of course, much more to remember and celebrate in the lives of those who gave their all for our country. As it stands today, less than 1% of Americans will ever serve in her armed forces. Our most recent conflict in Iraq and Afghanistan is the first major war in the nation's history where a majority of the population has no immediate connection to a soldier, sailor, airman, or marine serving overseas. As I came into the church this morning, I couldn't help but notice the bronze plaques that hang in the narthex, listing those who served and died in the Second World War. There are no plaques for modern soldiers who serve. Our communities have lost the same sense of connection and recognition that we once had. The young men and women who join these days are mostly doing so out of a sense of wanting to do more with themselves, to be a part of something bigger than themselves, to be more than they are already. Last week in his sermon, Pastor Dion reminded us that we can just exist or we can really live. But what do we live for? The second part of that sermon is that we, of course, need to live for a life of service, to do the things that God calls us to do. Like those apostles who were given the gift of the Spirit, it's a call to be something bigger than ourselves. All of us here in church understand this call as we have left our homes and our individual lives to be a part of something bigger in the church, in this local congregation, and in Christianity worldwide. To me, this holiday of Memorial Day seems to be more important than ever. The Memorial, holiday, the Memorial Day holiday is not about patriotism. It's not about waving our flag and claiming that our country is better than any others. It's a day to reflect and remember, a day to count our blessings for what we do have as a nation. In this day and age, when so many are self-centered in their idealism, are so defendant of their rights as a person, it's a day to be thankful that there are those who serve and give their all for everything that we have. Our freedom of expression, our freedom to assemble, our freedom to choose our own path. Freedoms that many in the world will never know and would love to have. And maybe that's the thing that's most missing from our political landscape today. We can certainly be thankful for our rights without being possessive of our individual rights. On this Memorial Day weekend, we can take the lessons of those who have served and given all to say, we need to give to our communities as well to take the rights we enjoy as Americans and not hold them selfishly, 
but share those things that our nation and our world might be a better place, a light on a hill that other countries can emulate, that our world can truly know that call that those early disciples felt, that to live is to serve and to love God through that service. Thanks be to God for all those who give and for those who give all. Let's spend a moment of silence now in remembrance of those who have sacrificed themselves for their country. Thanks be to God for their love. Amen. We now come to our time of prayer, that time when we set apart a few moments in order to communicate with God those needs and desires of our hearts. Let us spend a few moments in silent prayer. I will pray for us and we will close with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Loving, generous, and gracious God, even the God who have inspired people throughout time to give more of themselves. We lift our hearts in prayer to you this morning. God, for all the needs that we have deep in our hearts, we pray that you would open ourselves to your love and grace even as we have so many things that distract us, we pray that you would remind us to remember others, that we could emulate those who have gone before us and make our lives, lives of service and love. Even as we enjoy so much in our country, we ask that you would not let us to be selfish and cold-hearted to those who are in need around the world but that you would remind us to open ourselves in ways that would bring your good news to every hurting soul. Be with us as we endure the trials of our weeks and help us to remember the grace that brought us here. For all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we give you thanks in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At the birth of the church, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. The work of the Holy Spirit flows like living water from the hearts of believers. Shall our confidence in the mission of our congregation and the wider church also overflow freely with the generosity of the faithful? May each of our families give without measure so that the larger family of faith may be a vessel of good news to the world. Let's take now our offering.
prayer of dedication together. Heavenly God, even as the first believers did in the early church, we lay our gifts at the feet of the apostles. May these gifts support the ministry of our congregation as well as strengthen the wider church here and everywhere. Give our leaders gifts of discernment for the wisest possible use of these resources which we dedicate to you today. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen.
benediction, I saw a note in the pulpit. Is Cindy Teese here? Okay. Did you want to, well, uh, the Grafton River Cruise, there's an insert in your bulletin about that. So if, uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure you can call the church office, but uh, take note of that, uh, of that insert. I'm sure that will be a, a great event for everyone. So glad to be back here among you as, as we uh, celebrate worship again in, in the church of my childhood. Receive now the benediction. Go then in peace, knowing that God has gone there before you, that the hand of God opens and delivers the world to you, and that you walk in his grace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. 